Hey there, my friends. What's going on? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And this morning, we have yet another amazing guest, as you probably guessed. Um, we do this every morning, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And we've been doing this show for roughly four years now. Nearly a thousand guests. I think we're at um, we're well over 800 actual interviews. Um, we're approaching a thousand episodes. Just don't have the exacts of how many interviews we've done, but just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Uh, and it has been uh, an amazingly wild ride uh, and very inspirational, always educational. And this morning will be no different. So please help me welcome, without further ado, to the Wake Up Legendary virtual stage, Hey, Maddie, how are you? Good. How are you, Dave? Oh, I'm I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Uh, thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Have you seen the show before? Oh, yeah. I'm a avid listener. You're an <laughs> avid listener. Oh, man. I always feel like a radio show host when people say that, like, you know, first time caller, first time caller. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, um, so where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Denver. Okay, Denver, Colorado. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, hello, all the way from St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, across the country there. Um, talk to us about, Maddie, what led you to, to Legendary? I mean, what made you want to start an online business here in the first place? Yeah, so I have been a nurse for about seven and a half years. I knew I wanted to be a nurse from a pretty young age in probably middle school, and my parents always taught us to, you know, grow up, get a nice job, be able to support yourself. Mm. Um, and so nursing just seemed like the best avenue. But I also, my dream was really to be a mom. So I'm currently 32 weeks pregnant with our first daughter. And so I kind of started, I know, so exciting. Um, she's due in May. And so my original, I was doing a travel contract in Seattle as a nurse mm -hmm. to make more money. Um, yeah save up before the baby comes and we ended up getting pregnant while we were there which was amazing um kind of fast forward to about november december time i had a really rough first trimester was super sick was still going into surgery into the operating room every day mm. and leaving to just throw up in the trash cans and it, it was really a rough rough go of things <laughs> and yep. i was like i have got to listen to this voice in my head that's always been there i started social media in 2018 so it's always kind of a side gig um, and then, yeah, I found Legendary through the mom entrepreneur on Instagram who was posting content um, about her faith, but also her journey through becoming an online affiliate marketer. And it just inspired me enough to click and then started the online 15-day uh, course in November. Mm -hmm. Took me a while to get through it. <laughs> a couple breaks here and there. And then in January, I decided to not go back to nursing and be able to stay home, enjoy the rest of my pregnancy, uh, and do this full time. Wow. Wow. Incredible journey and how things can change in such a short period of time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what was the main things as you were going through the education? Of course, you were already inspired, but what really made sense for you? I mean, what stood out? What light bulbs went off? that made you say, gosh, this makes sense? So many things. I think from right from the beginning, just the amount of um, help that there was out there. And, you know, you could reach out to actual individuals through the whole course and then um, being able to meet face to face over Zoom, just that brief little 15 minute meeting as you kind of go along to answer any questions was great. And then I think ultimately I was confident in my skills of being in front of the camera. I kind of grew up doing theater, dance, singing. I was comfortable with that aspect. And I, you know, had a small following on social media already, but I really didn't understand any of the back end side. I didn't understand the tech behind it all. I didn't understand how to set up sales funnels. And I'd been affiliating for clothing companies, makeup companies, making, you know, three to 5% little tiny commissions, which just was never enough to actually quit my nursing job. So fi figuring out a way to actually monetize my content that I was already producing, but kind of tweak it a little bit to stay within, you know, a certain niche was super helpful. 
Yeah. So you found the, 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 the available resources helpful, the ability to be able to get on Zoom and ask questions and uh, meet with somebody and also the, the, the community as well. Yes, absolutely. Good. Good for you. Good for you for using that stuff. Um, uh, you know, I've said this many, many times uh, throughout, you know, hundreds of times, maybe on the show specifically, um, that we're not the only ones in the world who teach these, these, these methods or these strategies, just like probably the college that many of you went to is not the only college that teaches that particular subject or that particular sort of degree. Um, but we do have a unique, uh, you know, approach to building community and providing resources. And certainly we want to sell more of our education, just like any business does. We're not a nonprofit, yeah. um, but we really, for, for those of you who really are serious about being entrepreneurs, it is important for you to learn how to be resourceful. It is also important for you to have an experience with a business who's doing marketing and sales, knowing that you know, you can say yes to things, no to things, that it is really ultimately your responsibility to decide how much you want to go in, how far you want to invest time, money, energy. You enrolled in our blueprints as well, from what I could see. Yep. I mean, you really kind of decided to go all in with this. What was your mindset about, you know, a lot of people, and I don't blame them, and I there's no, there's no judgment, but... Uh, are offended by needing to, or seem shocked by by the idea of investing in education, or buying a course, or investing in some sort of a program to upgrade their skills. What was your mindset about that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think my I've already felt like I learned so much from just the seven dollars <laughs> that for me it was okay. This is time to truly invest, and it was more of a mental thing for me. Obviously, I had to speak with my husband. We took a couple of days to figure it out, but um, I thankfully had, you know, saved up a bunch of money from travel nursing and this was the moment. And I just, you know, the intuition inside of me was saying, this is the time to do this. Invest in yourself. You believe in this brand and this company already. You've already learned so many skills. Um, it's time to have some skin in the game, truly, mm -hmm. to where I would want to wake up every day like you said, and be motivated to be my own boss, to create the content. It is very different. I'm used to waking up super early at the crack of dawn, but you know, getting on my scrubs, going into an office, same thing every day or to a hospital and having a very structured work life away yeah. from the house. And so transitioning to being in the home, having to, yeah, really keep myself on a schedule and keep myself motivated truly, but it's, it's super empowering, so. And I get that. I, I very much, and, and, I, and I would think everybody does. When you have a job, you're going in, you have to be there at a certain time. You have accountability people there waiting on you. You may even have patients or customers. And so that is your skin in the game. And right. for doing those things and following those instructions and doing what they tell you to do, you get a paycheck at the end of the week or at the end of the month. Entrepreneurship, owning your own business is the exact opposite of that, friends. Yeah. It, 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 there is nobody waiting on you. There is nobody standing over you. There yeah. is nobody at home or in your car or on big or wherever tapping you on the shoulder. So there, there has been, there is different ways that we can hold ourselves accountable. For example, at one time in my life, I may even need it now, who knows? Um, <laughs> Man, I wouldn't go to the gym without a dad gum trainer sitting there waiting on me. You know, I invested in that accountability, not because I didn't know how to exercise, but because I wasn't going to show up if somebody wasn't there waiting on me. And, exactly. and, and, and I didn't pay attention until I paid for yeah. it, yeah. you know, until I put something that meant something to me in the game. Um, so, yeah, that's an analogy. B by the way, when we when we invest in our education here or anywhere else to upgrade our skills, we, we, we not only gather accountability, skin in the game, as you called it, mm -hmm. um, but man, we're also upgrading our skills. What has that been like for you, uh, both the challenges and the empowering factors 
of start being new at something and having to start from scratch, but how and also how on the other side of the coin has it boosted your confidence and self-esteem? Yeah. I mean, I think just being super confident in selling something for the first time, I was always excited about what I was posting. It was always, I always had a very organic social media presence from being a nurse. A lot of my followers are nurses, soon to be nurses, prospective nurses. Um, but now that I've, you know, kind of shared my pregnancy journey, I kind of have that whole community as well, which has been great. But I think ultimately the blueprints, being able to walk through YouTube separately, TikTok separately, Instagram separately, and how to kind of break down the algorithms, how to create content um, within my niche has been imperative. And I think, again, just being comfortable enough, knowing that Legendary worked for me, I have, yeah, the accountability, but also I'm able to speak on this is what worked for my journey. And I would love to help other nurses that maybe are sick of bedside or also want to become a mom and be able to stay home or have a better work-life balance. I think I was in kind of a unique situation where I had, I'd really climbed the ladder within nursing and I was I was crushing it. Like I ended up as director of nursing at a plastic surgery center for a few years and I just still wasn't happy at the end of the day. I was bringing work home with me. My husband, I was like, I was so anxious all the time and it just felt like, okay, I'm, I'm making the maximum I can make as a nurse and I'm still not happy. What is, what is this? And then if I looked back within, it's like, well, I really want to help people. And that is why I genuinely became a nurse, even though that's kind of cliche to say, but I really do want to help people. But obviously I want to make a living and support my family as well. So this was kind of, yeah, my way to utilize all the resources that Legendary has also be able to share it with other people because ultimately I just want, yeah, others to be able to experience this because it's pretty great. Yeah. And you're, and you're branching out, you're building a business full of lots of different offers. You told us in your questionnaire, you're promoting other softwares, you're promoting other, you know, uh, tools and uh, then tons of other physical product companies, mostly in fashion and beauty niches. Are you finding that those type of things, people are interested in your pregnancy, interested in your, in, you know, how you're taking care of yourself, what products you're using on your body? Are those things that you're finding easy to share and make sense to go ahead and share a, a way in which they can take your recommendation, but you can also get compensated for that recommendation. I mean, it, it obviously makes sense. We do it in the rest of our lives. Hey, I just ate at this restaurant. Hey, I just saw this movie. We never right. get a kickback from that. But yeah. are you finding ways that you can integrate affiliate marketing into all of the topics that you discuss on social? Yes, absolutely. I think that was one of the things that clicked as I was going through. Yeah, not only the challenge, but the blueprints was how can you continue to produce organic content, get on your stories every day and talk about, because really it's just, yeah, I'm talking, I'm sharing my journey through marriage, pregnancy, becoming a first time mom, quitting nursing. It used to be working as a nurse. Now it's, you know, transitioning into this and yeah, just organically talking and sharing with, you know, how I would with my family and friends about, yeah, products I'm using. And then naturally people just ask too. So then that prompts you to, Oh, they asked about this. I better become an affiliate for that company and see how I can, you know, continue on the back end to make those profits and continue to be profitable, but also stay organic and true to myself and what I'm using on a daily basis or wearing on a daily basis or, um, yeah, utilizing in my own business. For sure. And, you know, what is cool about this for, and it always has been cool for me is, if I find something that I like and I use it because I'm in the practice of marketing and sharing things already, I naturally incline to go and look at that company's website and see if they have an affiliate program. And then all of a sudden the creative juices start flowing of how I can create a new promotion or campaign about that particular product and introduce something new to my audience, right? Yeah, yeah, be, absolutely. That's the glasses, I, I need my props. But <laughs> that's, that's the glasses, you know, you start to see the world, the internet a little differently that, that now all of a sudden, instead of just being a full-time consumer, yeah, which consumer 
ism is a wow. gift and a curse, right? Yeah. It's like, okay. yeah, it's nice to be able to shop. Who doesn't like to shop until we drop? <laughs> I love capitalism. I love the, I love Target, Walmart, the mall, the internet, and dad gum, that money get, goes out faster than it comes in. And so now all of a sudden as a marketer, I have an opportunity to be able to, in, whether you're somebody who wants to make thousands, millions, or whether you're somebody who just wants to be able to pay for your products or right. pay for your hobbies or make some extra cash on the side or simply be a part of the economic system and be compensated for talking about something. I mean, friends, every celebrity, if they are approached by a company, they won't even wear something. They won't even wear a brand unless the company is paying them. But you normies, us peasants, we need to just, right? It's like, yeah. we should just talk about things without any compensation. When in right. reality, why not? Why can I introduce product? Well, you can. And that's the, yes, that's the, 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 the whole catch to this. That's the whole shift that I hope everybody is beginning to have if this isn't really clicking for you and you're just kind of, this isn't making sense. This, this is about participating in the economy and getting your slice of the pie, even if it's a small slice, getting compensated for your participation in sharing and recommending and reviewing or even in buying. Because you first, in many cases, have to buy something or you are buying something. So I love that you're doing that. What what else is exciting uh, about launching when you went to launch? Also, what was scary? What stands out to you? I mean, I know you said you were um, comfortable on camera, but talk yeah. to us about you know what stood out to you in terms of you know what was either really exciting about finally getting started or what limiting beliefs did you have to overcome? Let's kind of tackle some of those. Yeah, I think my limiting beliefs were always you know, what you, what you were just talking about, it brought to my head. I always, again, I kind of had this presence since 2019. I knew people were in or 2018. I knew people were interested in how I was living, what products I was using, the things I was doing, but I was always nervous about reaching out to the companies and saying, Hey, this is what it I am worth. This is what I charge for a post, or this is what, you know, I would like in return for wearing your product, using your product, selling your product. And that was the part that I wasn't ever super confident. And I just always said, well, why, why would they want to work with me? Why should I even bother? So a lot of the times I would just let companies reach out to me and then they wouldn't be companies I'd want to work with. It wasn't really an organic, you know, partnership. And so then I felt weird sharing it with my audience. And so I think, yeah, ultimately the, the blueprints helped with that a lot. Um, being confident in, reaching out to brands and companies. Also, guys, there's so many companies that allow you to be an affiliate. You literally, that's something I learned through this process. You Google that company's name, affiliate program, and it's amazing how many things I was already promoting without becoming a, a legit affiliate with them yeah. and funneling that money you know, through to make myself have income. So yeah. um, I think that was the main limiting belief at first. And once I kind of got more confident doing that, sorry, my dog's drinking water. <laughs> Drink up. Bud. Drink up. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I felt empowered to jump in full force and launch basically out of, I kind of, again, I bought the blueprints. So I was super invested. And then I started my LLC. And I think once I had that and I could genuinely speak to my audience and say, Hey, I'm a business owner now. I, mm -hmm did the dang thing. I have an LLC. I, you know, I'm my own boss officially. It was kind of, it kind of fell into my lap. I was supposed to have this part-time nursing position when I came back from my travel contract. <laughs> There's the hat throw. Got it. And, <laughs> and the, the part-time job just didn't work out it, in my gut. It fell off. And I was like, what is this voice in my head? Okay. And I, I realize not everyone has, you know, the opportunity to just quit right away and jump full time into affiliate marketing as well. So I kind of I see both sides, but I thankfully listened to the voice. I quit nursing and just launched and decided to start posting videos about the fact that I had quit as a nurse, my process through it. It's OK. Sorry. <laughs> it's 
Come on in. Come on in. Oh, no. Okay. Now he's eating. Chip, go. <laughs> go with dad. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I think I was scared for sure. I was scared to share the content with my, I knew my a lot of my audience was nurses. So I think that was, again, another limiting belief. But it's such a niche that I also am able to tailor my content to them still, which I'm still kind of working on and ironing out the kinks um, mm -hmm. because they're really interested in that. How does a nurse live? How do nurses you know, get different jobs and do this. So I think I just, yeah, needed to figure out a way to kind of continue to tailor to the audience that I already have created and love and, you know, really have good relationships with, but also, yeah, be able to help them on this side of things too. Yeah. Well, wow. So powerful. And I love how you allowed your actions, your uh, <clears throat> investments, your, and when I say investments, I mean, just you taking your hard earned money and putting it in the game, you taking the time and energy and work. So when I say investments, folks, I'm also talking about, um, time talking about energy. Uh, it takes time. It takes effort to go through in, you know, you, you can buy a million courses out on the internet. And if you do nothing with them, nothing will happen. Right. That's that's what our disclaimer on our sales pages actually means is that the average person who buys anything doesn't get results because they don't they don't do anything with it. But when you follow through, it takes effort to go through, watch the videos, stay focused, stay disciplined, follow through, then actually set up a corporation. So you're a legitimate business. So you're actually then able to say, I'm a business. I have a business. How simple. I know. How simple but how yeah. empowering and how many of us are missing that the 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 ability to be able to speak confidently about something how many of you also have that and are overlooking it right. are underestimating yourself are are give, not giving yourself enough credit and speaking as confidently about here's the other thing that i realized and i wonder what comes up for you maddie when i say this you know, many of you know that I got clean and sober in 2008. And one of the real secrets to that long term sobriety was to turn around and help somebody else. In recovery, they called that sponsorship. And so, you know, I had somebody who said, Well, Dave, where, when are you going to get your first sponsee? And I said, Well, I don't have anything to offer. Too young, too early. They said, Well, have you done step one? Right. I said, yeah. They said, well, as long as you're one step ahead of somebody else, you yep. can help them to get to that next step. I'm sure that's true in nursing. Mm -hmm. You could be on for six months, three months, one week, one right. day, somebody who comes on with zero days. Now, all of yep. a sudden, hey, I know what it's like to be in my first day. My first day was crazy. Put your seatbelt on and let me show you around, right? So as long as we in what any any given niche topic category that we're talking about, we have a little bit more experience than the next person. Now, we can always say to ourselves, Maddie, right? Well, I'm sure people have more experience and knowledge than I do. Right. They don't. They actually don't. Well, and no one else is They're you. Not. They're, and if they do, they're not going to be listening anyways. They're maybe not your target customer. Your target customer or prospect is the person who doesn't have any experience, who's in contemplation mode mm -hmm. and hasn't taken the step to actually get started. And now you can show them, but over to you. Yes, they're also not you, right? <laughs> That's yeah, I think that's the biggest thing that if I do, you know, get DMs from people or texts from friends or family members like, hey, how is how's it going? Can you show me more? Can you teach me more? And I think ultimately doing the course, getting the blueprints, all of that is such a, a foundation. But one thing I will say that I often share with people is, you know, I've lost followers during this. I've gained followers during this process. I, it makes me happy knowing that the people that are leaving, that's okay. They're going to go find someone that fits them better and they're going to take to more. <laughs> I am not offended if you don't want to follow my content. Right. I, of course, love gaining new followers because, again, I'm growing my community to be 
genuine, authentic to me, what I like. If, if you don't like what I like or how I live or, you know, whatever I'm sharing, that's completely fine. I think that takes people a minute to realize and can be hard. There's always haters out there. The internet's a wild, wild ride, but it's so amazing in the sense that you can really formulate your audience to be what you want it to be and the people that are going to support you and want to see you succeed. You don't need the people that are coming and going or are being haters. Don't be afraid to block them and keep on pushing forward because you're going to, the more you create content and be genuine, you're going to get people that want to be there and want to be there because it's you. No doubt. And you're right. There is going to be haters. People are going to come and go. People are going to go and then, um, you know, uh, create a fuss and yeah. even try to, um, you know, try to do, you know, bad things. You're right. The world is a crazy place. The Internet is a crazy place. People are wild and crazy and unstable and unhinged. As long as you do the right thing when nobody's looking and you yeah. build your business in a way where you have nothing to hide, we're experiencing something like that right now. Um, and, and guess what? We actually have because we run our business with such transparency, authenticity, um, yeah. and, 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 uh, integrity, you know, you can then respond professionally. You can mm -hmm. then respond with facts. Now, certainly you can respond to people who move on with just grace or by ignoring them or by saying nothing. Sometimes right. you do have to respond, but we learn through this, through these skill sets and through this, through becoming professionals, how to respond and how to be calculated, how to be non-emotional about it, how mm -hmm. to, um, and, and so, you know, for those of you who are part of our community and who have been here for some time, you get an opportunity to be able to see me and us respond to things, deal with things. Um, you know, we, th those things are always happening. There's things going on right now. Um, yeah. And th things will happen with you and your business as well. And, um, and you're right. Uh, you're, the most important thing is that you don't stop. You right. don't quit, right? Because being a business owner now all of a sudden, and the more successful you get, the more of a target is on your back. That's mm -hmm. another thing that you have to understand that being a business owner, you have to develop thick skin, right? You can't be offended by everything. Your yeah. feelings can get hurt. You can f still have feelings and, and be a human being, but the, when we start taking it personally and allow it to stop us from executing and helping the people who are relying on us. See, this is what I how I look at my business. I look at my business as I have, despite what's going on, whether people like it, love it, are attacking, doesn't matter, hating, right. whatever, I have a responsibility to my customers, those who are relying on me to serve them. And for those of you who only have a couple of followers, I would challenge you to look at those instead of complaining about your videos only having a couple of views, your, yeah. your accounts having a couple of, of, of followers. I would challenge you to look at that as a responsibility to serve those few people, because if you can't be trusted to serve those few people, how will God, the universe, however you want to look at it, how will you be given more? What comes up yeah. for you when I say that? Yeah, absolutely. What comes up for me is, you know, even when I started and launched my funnels and, you know, started my first campaign, it it can feel like, oh my gosh, okay. Okay. I got one person to sign on. Wow. Like, you know, this is amazing. Let's celebrate that. But as you move along, it definitely can be, okay, how do I get hundreds of people? How do I get thousands of people? But again, yeah, if you focus in on, even if you do have a really small following, if that following is interested in you and what you are promoting all you need is a couple of people a month really if you're selling high ticket items or um you know once you have that email list going you can promote as much or as little as you want and that's ultimately up to you but if those few people trust you that's genuinely all you need and i think that yeah it was intimidating to me at first like oh how am i going to make real money from this but it happens organically if you have those followers that are ride or die and want to see you succeed, like we were talking about earlier. So, yeah, don't let the small following play any role in your head. It, it's 
it's not really about that. It's about it. Will the small following of people agree to or buy what you're selling and believe in you really? Yeah. And each little interaction that you have with somebody makes them feel more, you know, when you have a small business, when you have a small following in the beginning stages of your business, it's a gift mm -hmm. because you have more time to be able. Now, isn't that an, isn't that, hold on a second. Hold on. I just got out the old glass half empty. Now tell me people, tell me viewers, do you see a bottle that's half full or half empty? Well, if you see your followers as and for anybody who's new thinking I'm out here sipping on the old Heinies, this is Mountain <laughs> Valley spring water. Relax. Water. Um, <laughs> I'm sober for God's sakes. Um, yes. You have an opportunity when yeah. you have a small following to actually interact with them. How are you building trust? How are you responding to people? So many people uh, talk about voice messages, things of that nature, responding to emails. Besides your content and the things that we can see from the outside, what are some of the things that we don't see from the inside, such as how you handle DMs, such as how you respond to emails or, or email people within your email list in a certain way that makes them feel like you're talking to them instead of just blasting the whole list? What things stand out to you that you do that you think help in building bond and trust with your audience and somebody with a small audience could also do? Yeah, absolutely. I think I I genuinely try to answer every DM and I, I don't ever formulate generic responses. I respond to each person, you know, how I would authentically to a friend or a family member. So I think that's something I've always prided myself on. Does it get tricky at times? Absolutely. But yeah, like you were saying, when it is a smaller group of people, it's a lot easier to manage. So for sure in those times, use your own voice, the words you would use to a family member or a friend and genuinely care to formulate a relationship. Because again, those are the people that are going to stick around for years to come, months to come and support you through what you're doing. Um, another thing I did which I hope to continue is, you know, when I first had my my first, you know, let's say 10, 15 people sign up um, for my legendary course through my funnel, I sent them a personalized video message via email. So I just whipped out my phone, did a quick, hey, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. How can I support you? You know, I want this to be a continued support system for you. So I am, you know, reach out this way, that way, and I'm here for you. And I I saw a really good response from that. Um, I like that you said the voice text thing because I should I should do that more through message. I think that would be awesome way to connect with people. Just that way they know it's actually me. It's my genuine voice coming through their phone answering a question, and it's probably a little quicker too. So yeah, well, it can be quicker for you. Some people, you know, you risk when you send audio that people can't hear it because they're at work, and 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 that's the value of text on screen or messaging. But I think more people I've heard have gotten seen positive results from sending audios because it gives your customer a chance to be able to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 what I really think it does in 2024 is I think it lets people know that it's you responding and not a, like a virtual assistant or something. You know what well, I mean? Yeah, not AI. Like a bot. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, excuse me. Do we even use virtual assistants anymore? Yeah, we just use robots. Right. So talk to us about some tips to grow your social media, quote, fast, right? Uh, right. Give us some timelines here. Help us to understand what are some of the things that have helped your accounts to grow faster than, than um, maybe if you weren't doing the things that you have done? What have you learned along the, the and what is your definition of fast? I mean, re remind right. us first and foremost of some timelines. And let's also, everybody remember that Maddie's results are not gonna be your results. You may get better results, less results, no results at all. Just use this as educational, um, use this as testing tips to try mm -hmm. things out and see what is gonna work best for you. So give us some timelines and then tell us about what's worked best in growing your audience. Yeah. Okay. So when I started in 2018, I will say, I think my, my following grew quickly in the sense that within probably three to six months, I had, you know, in the thousands range on both Instagram and YouTube. This was before I was doing TikTok. And I think 
ultimately when I look back on my journey now, now that I know everything I learned from Legendary, back then my audience grew quick because I was so focused on my niche. I was speaking to only those individuals that were within the niche that I was comfortable talking about, which at that point in time, I really wasn't focusing on making money at all, which probably, you know, really helped me to gain this organic following, which was awesome and great. And it happened quickly. And then it kind of got overwhelming quickly as well, because I was working full time as a nurse, you know, I was a young, new nurse trying to figure out my professional life in that sense as well. So I think then once I went through legendary and and then once it grew to a certain point, it kind of stopped and I was seeing it be pretty stagnant for a while. I kind of just started posting more about, you know, what was comfortable for me. Cause again, I wasn't really making that much money. So I was like, okay, I'll keep, I'll keep the people interested. Hopefully I'd still enjoy doing this. So why not continue? But yeah, it wasn't ever, okay, I'm diving fully into this until I found legendary. And then I will say, like we talked about earlier, <laughs> some people have come and gone, but my following has, has grown since the original kind of growth period definitely has grown since January. The more content you produce, the more you're getting in front of people's faces, basically. And so I, I would say, yeah, in the last three months, I've definitely gained followers. I've gained those more genuine followers too, which is great. The people that are actually, you know, here to stick around and not only just from my nursing niche, but now, you know, in, I was able to kind of utilize what I already had built and now transition and I'm still learning. I, I'm not perfect. My YouTube views are down some days from the nursing content. So, you know, figuring out ways to still help those individuals and kind of tie back in. I'm still a nurse at the end of the day, you know, how, what do I miss from it? You can always, you know, continue to engage those people just because you may maybe switch niches too. So that's kind of something I've been focusing on and continuing to grow. Yeah. My new mom's niche, my <laughs> helping baby sleep through the night niche eventually. And, you know, how to create a cute nursery, just all the different things that now my life is transitioning into. So. And I think that's just what really people want to see from everybody. I mean, you know, and again, it's, it's, it doesn't particularly have to be depending on what niche you're, you're in. Um, you know, there's always going to be better bonding with the audience. If you're like in Tim's workshop, you know, if you're like in your own workshop, you know, I, I have seen in the uh, one affiliate campaign we give an example of in the blueprints is the books, Bucks Woodworking. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that particular affiliate went on to a site like iStock Photo or whatever and just bought a bunch of royalty free uh -huh. images and created a pen name or a, you know, a sp a, a spokesperson. Um for for the business sort of like a company would create a mascot for mm -hmm. a, a business the geico lizard you know is the geico lizard a real lizard no it's not it's a cartoon <laughs> or a graphic um the same way that you can create um spokespeople or mascots uh uh or pen names for mm -hmm. your company um and uh, we show people how to do that in 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 those sections. However, if you you know starting out, if you do or can get into something, I think that's why so many people get into the wealth niche, niche or the make money online niche because they're already doing it. Right. That's the kind of journey that they're on is trying to, and I think everybody in America right now is trying to do that in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, especially with the internet and so much opportunity right now existing, whether it be in artificial intelligence, whether it be in digital marketing, course creation, whether it be in cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. there's so many emerging markets, so much, or whether it's like nursing or medicine being yeah. done, telehealth, telehealth, i.e. internet me medicine. <laughs> it's, you don't, you don't, I mean, my, all my telehealth is not like, Hey, call my landline. It's I get a link to jump on a video conference chat right. and yeah. I'm sitting there talking like you and I are talking right now. And it's like, well, I got this rash on my arm or, you know, I got, a, you know, a fever or I got this symptom or that symptom. And they try to diagnose if possible um, yeah. 
over 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 a video conference. All of, I mean, people are doing uh, workouts uh, in in doing uh, fitness coaching, nutrition coaching. People are doing organizational coaching. People are doing therapy. People are doing uh, so many different topics, professionals uh, uh, or professions. People are teaching, bringing people into their wood shop. People are bringing people into their homes and showing how they set up nurseries. You nailed it. People are demonstrating how to train dogs and get babies to go to sleep and get children to um, be, be better, well-adjusted for life. Uh, you know, how to get them to read more. How to, I mean, you I name it. It's being taught and done and shared on the internet. How to enhance your relationship. How to get over a breakup or a divorce how to meet somebody new, how to pick up people at bar. I mean, it, it is endless. So you're right. We can bring, whether it be our profession, whether it be an expertise, whether it be a passion, whether it be a hobby, or whether it just be something that is a current event in our life, in that chapter that we're in, like with you. Yep. What else has worked for building your audience? What other things have you done with your videos how do you approach posting, editing, and in, in coming up with ideas, like just kind of your whole like content creation strategy of actually getting it onto the internet filmed yeah. and, pu and published? Yeah. Um, firstly, love the TikTok edi editing software. So I always use that. And then I remove the watermark to blast it, you know, on Instagram, even, <clears throat> excuse me, even YouTube shorts things like that. And then, yeah, I, I really self taught my, in the beginning, how to edit, how to create content. I really didn't know what I was doing, which goes to say to any of you that are just starting or thinking about starting this business, you know, you really, all you need is something you're passionate about sharing because the content, like I wake up in the morning now, ever since I think probably I bought the blueprints. I wake up every morning and for about an hour, I'm thinking about content ideas. <clears throat> They're just rolling through my head constantly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pregnancy. Sorry. Um, and it's amazing what happens when you just put your phone, like I've got this little Octo Buddy thing, stick it to the mirror or stick it to the door, wherever you are, and just film anything. Literally anything could be B-roll that you can then put your ideas or your thoughts onto a video and post it and hey you've got you know a couple videos for the day mm -hmm. um i think just switching the mindset around because it used i used to be super focused or hyper focused i'll say on what am i going to post today you know do i need to film a full get ready with me do i need to film a full mm -hmm. day in the life of a nurse do i need to film you know and it seemed daunting because i was trying to tackle these big things that take a ton of time to edit a ton of time to film and you know produce the end result which i wasn't really making anything from that you know i might have gained a connection or two with people but i think yeah blueprints and especially going through each um social media platform like i said through the blueprints and kind of targeting your content there's a way easier way to <laughs> create content and quicker editing um to get things out to your followers that are that they're gonna like those are my favorite type of videos to see yeah. is people just walking on the beach or making their coffee or live in their life and then you gain something from the uh what do you call it and and ed 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 edutainment there we go from yeah. the edutainment so thank you all for the amazing comments and support and just everybody's going crazy getting so much out of this i just saw a couple of questions first of all got to get this out of the way elizabeth said when do you do maggie did i miss you saying that congratulations <laughs> thank you uh we are due end of may so and, okay. come and quit yeah <laughs> uh asia said uh do, how did you get over perfectionism did you ever struggle with that and i think that's kind of what you're alluding to right now is that you enjoy not only creating or now do maybe not at the yeah. beginning you thought yeah. you needed to be perfect and do the whole get ready with me and have it look all perfect not only do you like creating but you also like watching videos that are not perfect so was there a moment? Was there a thing? Was it just for Deja, what, how did you kind of just overcome that? Was that a process or was that a moment of 
you, you, you know, enlightenment where you were like, you know, basically you had an effort moment, I call it. Definitely struggled with this, you guys. If you want a good chuckle, you can go to my early, early, early days on YouTube and watch some cringy videos that I will not remove because it's part of my <laughs> journey to get to where I am. But I mean, yeah, I struggled with it. I, I struggled with comparing myself to other influencers, comparing myself to other nurses, comparing myself to you name it, I was comparing myself. And at the beginning I thought, yeah, okay, if I'm a little less authentic in this, in this instance, or I change my voice or I change my appearance or I, you know, add these things to my wardrobe or change my hair, you know, all those perfectionism things, uh, people will like me more. No, I, I did have a few moments where family members, <laughs> my boyfriend, who's now husband of seven years at the time was like, uh, babe, I think, you know, you could, you're changing your voice a little bit when you film, or I've noticed that you're doing things that aren't you just be you. And then I had a moment and this was years ago, but my sister too, being like, you know, I'm, I'm noticing these things. So people in your life, if they care about you enough, will definitely, uh, encourage you to be more genuine and get over the comparison perfectionism part of it. It is a huge part of social media. I will say it's, it's a struggle. It is challenging, but um, I think listen, listening to the loved ones in your life and just the more you do it, the more comfortable you become and the more authentic and unique. So <laughs> yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, fun times are here, which, you know, this is what happens if you can't afford the blueprint struggle is real. No, struggle is not real. You right. just use what you can. There's so much value. Friends, listen to me, hear me. Stru fun times are real. Would you share your name with us? That's that's the first step is be a part of our community here and, uh, you know, let us know who you are. So because we're putting our face and our name and likeness out there for you. So um, that would be the first thing. That's a free tip for you is let people know who you are. Be a part of the society. Be a part of the community. Create create social media channels that have your name and face on them. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to get um, results, uh, you're going to have to take risk. You're going to have to take risk either. But with money now or in the future, there's just going to be financial risk. There's going to be emotional risk, putting yourself out there. But friends, as I said at the beginning of this episode, we have nearly a thousand of these. I've been doing these wake up legendaries. These are free. There's more value in these wake up legendaries than people charge in their $10,000 guru coaching programs. The $7 15 day challenge has more value in it than many high dollar guru courses just it's not about your resources friend it's about your resourcefulness okay so and if you got to go out there and you got to do extra research quite frankly i actually just here in legendary is enough free low to no cost value and content that if you want it bad enough you can find it and you don't even have to look that hard okay yeah. <clears throat> um, do you agree with that totally pepper said the B-roll isn't my problem. I just never know what to say or put in the caption. What comes up for you when you read that? Been there for sure. Um, I think, again, the more you dive in and the more you do this, the more you will come up with ideas. But there's also no harm in the content that you enjoy consuming. Chances are a lot of other people enjoy consuming that too. So it's okay to take ideas from people, you know, maybe find other niches that are doing things totally differently, but it might spark an idea in your head. Uh, and then just start trying stuff out. Even if it's something as simple as your, your it's B roll and then read caption. And then in the caption, you are sharing what's on your mind that day or how you overcame a challenge, how, you know, depending on what your niche is, you really can, put anything in those captions and it's going to hopefully with algorithm, the algorithm, find the right people. And then it'll just start to come more naturally. So hopefully that helps. It's not necessarily what you put there either. It's just getting content out, people to see your face, people to see you. And then yes, of course they want to gain something from your content. So I think naturally that um, gets easier as you go along. Awesome. 
uh, and fun times are here. It's Daniel Booth. Hi, Daniel. Yay! Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, Tammy said, do you use a teleprompter to help with talking videos? I am struggling. I've never used a teleprompter. I, I will say in the beginning times, I would, I would have some notes and things for sure. If I was doing a more informative, sit down, long form video, I think again, the more comfortable, and it's totally okay to do that at the beginning. If whatever you need to remember your topics or your what you want to hit on, totally fine. Also, there's a beauty in editing. I edit a lot of stuff out. I edit out my ums, my, you know, whatever's annoying, uh, my long pauses. <laughs> and you can just sit there in front of the, don't be afraid to sit there in front of the camera and make awkward noises, faces, stumble over your words because you can always edit it out later. So don't, yeah, don't stop yourself from doing something just because you don't think you're going to remember or have your notes in your lap. Look down occasionally. You can edit things out. You can splice together. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've never used a teleprompter. I think if you have one, that's, that's awesome and cool. I think yeah. eventually you just won't need it because you'll be so confident in what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, Prosper with Connie says, if you don't know really what to say, is it, if, if you don't know really what to say, is it really your niche? And that's an interesting question. I mean, Very, I think you could yeah. go either way with that answer. You could maybe say, Hey, Connie, you got a good point. Maybe it's not your niche. I also think that there's a certain thing that happens. It's this weird phenomenon that people just get writer's block. They get, mm -hmm. they go, they freeze when the video goes on. They forget what to say. When you're feeling pressure of having to say something or put something out there, suddenly you go blank. I've seen people just turn dumb. I mean, just as if they fell off the turnip truck just yesterday. I mean, just, just a couple of weeks ago in their job, they were crushing it, leading, you know, executing, knowledgeable, expert, you know, and then people go to do something different. And it's like they just are like, or these hands, <laughs> how do I walk? You know, for whatever reason, it's tough to be new at something. And yeah. this is a different method of delivery for a lot of you. You're going from interacting with people in person or picking up the old telephone and talking to Hank or whoever to now you're working with your phone technology. There's already huge limiting beliefs with so many people, especially our lovely boomer friends. I always love to you know poke fun at i've got tons of boomer relatives and one of the things that i often say when they do a technical thing I, oh we got a boomer move here we got a we got a boomer situation um that's just i'm right behind you so don't worry boomers it's all in good fun um i actually respect my boomers who are taking these steps to be yeah. technically savvy and build internet businesses my point is, is that we can talk ourselves out of success, out of doing things by by having limiting beliefs, but then reiterating those limiting beliefs over and over to ourselves until we believe them. Right. So what what have you ever had writer's block? Have you ever not known what to record or create or do or write? How do you handle yourself in those in those times? Yeah, Connie, great question. I think that ultimately I, I definitely go through this and I go through waves of not feeling creative, not wanting to create content, not have just not really having that thing that I wake up with most days. Some days you just don't feel it. And again, I think that's where posting something is better than giving up for the day and not posting at all. Mm -hmm. um, if you, especially if this is, you know, your business and you want to invest in it and continue to grow like we all do it's imperative that you yeah we're gonna all hit writer's block we're gonna hit creative blocks i think to your question it might be time to change niche if you go days on end without having any sort of inspiration or words to share with your audience if not truly nothing's coming up yes might be time to change your niche and find we all love I could think of 10 things I love right now that I could talk endlessly about. So maybe switch up your niche and see if that takes with your audience a little bit better. But I feel that there's no harm in posting a video, even if it doesn't get views, even if you really can't think of what to write and you think your caption's horrible, try it out because you might surprise yourself and it might be the one that goes viral. You just, you just never know. <laughs> True. And that often is how it happens. Elizabeth says, ha, ha, ha. The camera can make us forget everything. 
It's very true. <laughs> so uh, true. Karina says, do you really, do you really, this is one of those like really questions. Like, can it really be that simple? Do you really use only use TikTok for editing or do you use a more pro edit tool like a post-production tool like Final Cut Pro? Am I working too hard? Okay, so for TikTok, TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts, I only use the TikTok editor. <clears throat> it really is that simple. It is. It usually never uh, breaks down. Like I never lose my spot as I'm editing. I usually can do it pretty. I have it down to a really quick. You know, like what exactly I like to do. It's easy to splice, add music, add uh, um, words on the screen, <clears throat> and then it's really easy to export and then remove the watermark and and get onto your other things. For YouTube, I do use, yes, a backend or a post-production tool. That's a little bit different. I definitely can't edit my YouTube videos <laughs> on this device. So that has to be done on the computer. Uh, but yeah, you might be working too hard if you're doing these super professional long editing softwares for your short form videos. And, you know, we haven't even talked about YouTube. Very interesting. You've got a quite a channel there with uh, 65,000 subscribers on that. We've got your uh, YouTube handle up right now, Maddie Momo. Mm -hmm. um, I, what is the difference between long form and short form content? For those of you who are wondering mm -hmm. what long form is, just longer videos. Lo right. This is a long form content video right here, what we're doing. There's no editing or little Lip. editing, but it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's longer. It's not a 30 second short form would be considered the videos that are getting posted and really, you know, the majority that are dominating TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So what's the, what's the diff here? And what do you recommend as far as somebody doing them all doing them one at a time? um what what if you could go back and would you do yeah. it exactly as you've done it or would you change your approach uh that you've taken over the last couple of years of building these different channels let's let's talk about the long form let's make sure we get that in there yeah i mean i think there is power in all of the social media platforms so i would not buttonhole yourself in or pigeonhole yourself into one of these social media platforms i definitely think if you feel confident utilize as many of them as you can handle. However, I definitely YouTube helped expand my other platforms as well. So I think the uniqueness of long form, like you were saying, Dave, is you have so much more time to connect with your audience. And I personally grew up love loving to watch daily vlogs. It was just one of my guilty pleasures. I'd throw it on as I was doing anything else and love to just watch how people are living. And I think Ultimately, I was like, you know, I, I should just try this. And that's what I started doing in Day in the Life of Nurse vlogs. And mm. the longer form content, you just, again, you have so much more time to connect. So it's not that quick, grabby stuff, even though you might still have that as an intro to your videos, which is always great because it'll keep people watching. But the more they watch, the longer they watch you, they're, they're feeling like they're hanging out with you in their kitchen while they're getting ready for work. They're, you know, developing such a deeper longer connection with you because you're able to share so much more. So I find that the combination of all of the short form and the long form is what ultimately builds. Cause sometimes, sometimes people don't want to sit down and watch a 45 minute vlog either. You know, mm -hmm. they, sometimes they just want your short content, but I think YouTube is unique in building an audience because a lot of people old to super young are on YouTube, looking things mm -hmm. up, wanting to know information. Um, and I think that's ultimately where people go to see how is this person living their day to day because it's that longer form content. So, yeah. Well said, well done. Also, Tammy, just let's go back through some of these before we bring this in for a landing. I am going from corporate CFO to a fumbling, silly person. It's so <laughs> frustrating. Hang in there. We get it. Okay. Get it, for sure. Pepper says, this is great. Pepper Lloyd says, I am a therapist by trade, so I'm used to listening before I have something to say. So struggling being the main speaker. Mm. Really an interesting point. I wonder if that, that, do, do you relate to that at all as a nurse going into a room, always having to ask somebody first and then respond based on their, what they say? Yeah, I definitely can relate. And I think when you go from a medical background, that definitely can be 
challenging. I would just say, Pepper, that, you know, the more you post and the more you get comfortable again, you are naturally going to have people that are asking you, hey, how do you do this? How, how can I better myself in this way? Whatever your niche may be. And then you can start tailoring your content to then you have a question. Then your content is the answer, because if one person has that question, multiple people are going to have the same question. So, um, yeah, I think start off by maybe take something that has happened in your life or a family or friend had asked you at lunch today and that's you. OK, let me respond to this as if that person was asking me this question right now. Go ahead and film the content um, and then kind of, yeah, it'll pick up as you go. I think your whole content strategy can also be responding to people's comments or questions and you can totally. build that in from the beginning. You know, um, I've seen I saw one of my most interesting recent discoveries was this was this guy who is a. Um, he does he does autopsies. Wow. Yeah. And so he's not showing the bodies. Yeah. yeah. Obviously but he is in the autopsy room mm -hmm. and he films his videos in there again, not with a body in the back or anything, but just right. you can tell he's there and just people feed him questions. I mean, nowadays people want, I mean, look at what we're doing right now. We want to teach, but we also want to model what works. Yeah. That's what this show is kind of all about. It's not just entertainment or edutainment. It's also showing you guys what works. This works. This is an example of long form content. This is an example of me, you know, at a certain point. Yeah, 13 years. I've said it all 13 times, 1300 times. I'm bringing other people in. I'm using customers to provide social proof. I'm getting their experience. It's creating community. It's a way to build community. It's it's a way to incorporate and answer new people's questions and convert yeah. sales because people are listening to things firsthand and, 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 and also in third person from you, not just from me. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in, in how powerful it is, we've had several comments here. Thank you for taking questions. So use other people's content. There's a lot of channels nowadays that are built and based on reaction videos, reacting to other reporting news. You know, I mean, it's not all friends. Here's the thing that I want you to take pressure off yourself about. It's all already been said. You don't have to come up with an original idea. <laughs> Give yourself a break. You don't need to bring some groundbreaking math or science or um, concepts. You just need to find here's this is a platinum boulder i'm going to drop off in your at your doorstep right now friends whoever you're trying to serve find the simplest information that they need to know to get started and explain that and talk about that over and over and over again because if you make it simple they're going to they're going to understand it. And if they understand it and they get value, you're going to demonstrate that you can help them by actually helping them. They're going to feel helped and they're going to want to continue their journey with you. So don't try to make it complicated. Don't think you need to bring something new every day. As a matter of fact, Carolyn said, I post old videos over again. It's amazing that people see that old video and think it's brand new. Yay, Carolyn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's genius. I love it. Deja said, thanks for pulling up my question. You're welcome. And Maddie, thanks for your time today. Uh, what, t Real quick, tell us what you've learned about Maddie through this journey. Oh, man. That may so not much. be a quick thing, but what, what's something? <laughs> I'll try to keep it quick. Yeah, I think just that I can do this, that anyone can do this. It's been empowering and amazing scary at times, but just having so much support too. I didn't think that the people in my life necessarily would be so quick to rally around me in making such a big career shift. So I think I've just learned, you know, the people in your corner are going to be the people in your corner. And once they see you succeeding, and even if you're not succeeding, but, um, you know, I think if you're passionate enough about something and just believe in it, you're, you're going to do awesome things in this career path. Uh, I've just learned that, yeah, I can do it. I can own my own business. I can motivate myself. I can motivate others. 
And I am so grateful that this came into my life when it did, because I, again, I've been able to spend so much time enjoying my pregnancy, which as a nurse, I just was not going to be able to do as a full-time nurse and be able to stay at home with my baby too, and get to raise her in the way that I always envisioned, but also not having all the pressure on my husband to make all the income. So I've learned so many things I could talk for hours, but, um, but yeah, I'm just super grateful. Oh, we lost you, Dave. There we go. I'm having, I'm having <laughs> millennial issues over here. <laughs> millennial tech problems. Pepper came back and said, thank you so much, Maddie. I love your wisdom. Dave, thanks for pulling my questions in another great live, buddy. You are so welcome. Samantha says, this is a great wake up legendary oh. Elizabeth. Wow. Uh, that's so informative. Great show today. Thank you, Dave and Maddie. Sarah, amazing wake up legendary today. Lots of golden nuggets. Uh, Anna said, I haven't watched a wake up legendary episode in months. Well, where have you been? <laughs> this has been a great show to come back to. Thanks for all the golden nuggets. Aww. Brittany, hi, Brittany, said, This has been one of my favorite wake up legendary to date. So real, raw, and authentic. Maddie, they Thank are you. loving you. They Thanks are so loving everybody. you. I hope you have a chance to go back and scroll and see some of these. Um, people, you are so supportive and kind. And thank you for giving uh, us back some some positive energy as we uh, as we uh, are trying to do the same for you. Kenzie said, so <laughs> proud of my sister. My sister. Nice. Nice. So, thank you guys all so much. That means the most. Yeah. Le Leslie says you guys rock. Thank you both. Super Maddie. Best of luck with a baby in your new season. Connie says this is definitely one to revisit. Kristen says, is this show recorded? Yeah, you can watch all the Wake Up Legendary episodes right here on this Facebook page. You can also type into all your major podcast platforms, Wake Up Legendary, and you can listen to the audio version. Regina says, love your authenticity. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you greatly the power for the powerful sharing, Malik. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Dwayne says, this is my first live Wake Up Legendary. Great one. Congrats, Maddie. Oh. Karina said, this was my first show. Thanks so much for answering my question. Now, that's the power of answering somebody's question. You don't know. It could be their first time. You could win a customer for life. Yeah. Just, you know, by just taking one person. Uh, Camus says, I'm a nurse starting out and following you. Oh, <laughs> Vicky, Thanks. she's given us so much amazing info. Thank you. Uh, Christy said, authenticity is definitely what comes to mind when listening to Maddie. Tammy, congratulations to your soon to arrive bundle of joy. Ma'am, we could just, we could just uh, really, and I could read these to you all day long. I want you to <laughs> feel the love, feel the validation from everybody, feel the support, feel the um, you, you know, being, yeah, being, being really celebrated and appreciated, uh, for your, for your big decisions and your big bravery in starting this new path. Uh, thank you for your time today, Maddie. Enjoy your family, enjoy your husband, your dog and your <laughs> baby. Okay. Thank you so much, Dave. And thank you guys all so much for your nice comments. Always here if anyone ever wants to chat. So, <laughs> All right, Maddie, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Stay legendary, my friend. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for the wonderful support for Maddie. You can find her over on TikTok and Instagram at Maddie Ann Moeller, M-O-E-L-L-E-R. Everything else is spelled, uh, let me spell it out just in case you're listening. M-A-D-D-I-E-A-N-N. M-O-E-L-L-E-R, Maddie Ann Moeller, uh, over on YouTube, Maddie Momo, M-A-D-D-I-E-M-O-M-O. -O. That's where you can watch some of her long form content. Uh, she's been busy. She's got 65,000 followers on YouTube. Uh, she's got a nice following on her other social media profiles. Uh, you've heard the, uh, the good, bad, and the ugly today about what it's taken her 
uh, to be able to do this, to go from learning to launch, go from being on social media to then learning more, upgrading her skills and relaunching her business. And that's another thing that I want to remind everybody. There's nothing wrong with starting over. There's nothing wrong, wrong with relaunching. There's nothing wrong with pivoting. There's nothing wrong with upgrading your skills and reapproaching things. So keep that in mind. Don't get down on yourself thinking that you've lost out or that what you've done so far has been a waste. You have gained amazing knowledge and experience. Uh, don't let it be in vain. Use it, right? Use it. You'll be able to talk about the challenges and the failures that you've had in your future videos, in your future career. If you, the only way that you, you know, lose it is if you don't use it. You know, that's the only way that it's it's in vain. So, I, again, I'm not telling you to do something endlessly that's not working. But, I mean, also don't give up before your miracle happens, you know. And also, I wonder if there's any miracles that are already happening in your business that you're not paying attention to, that you're missing, right? Again, I bring back out the old bottle. Got to clear the – got some empty bottles here. No, they're not Heineken's. Empty water bottles. On my dad gum desk here, is it half empty? Is it half full? Right. So maybe there's some things that are happening in your business. You're growing. You don't notice it. Either way, now is a great time to start or start over. And Maddie gave us incredible wisdom and experience and inspiration today to do just that. So thanks again for an incredible interview. My friends, as always, you can find all the recordings here on the, the Facebook business page that you're on right now. We're streaming we also post all the replays over on YouTube. You can look up our YouTube channel. Just type my name on YouTube, David Sharp. You can also listen to all of these episodes on the major podcast platforms. Just type in Wake Up Legendary and we'll, you can listen to the audios. We get these interviews up same day as well. So you'll be able to hear this interview. And if you want a nice little nudge, okay, nothing major on your cell phone. See, it's March 27th, 11, 12. We're live. Go ahead and text WUL to 813-296-8553. This is my radio moment. Text WUL to 813-296-8553. We'll send you a little text message reminder in the morning with a link to click over and join us live. If you want a shirt or a hat, go to legendary, be legendary shop. throwing that out there in case anybody wants a hat to throw while I'm throwing my hat. Let's give Maddie a double hat throw for an incredible episode today. Boom. Okay. Uh, there's that. Uh, we'll end with a rally cap. I don't know if anybody played any baseball, but um, you know, there's multiple ways to wear your rally cap. Today we're rallying in so many different amazing ways. Um, as we start and start over, this is the other way that we wore our rally caps. If we didn't have two, you just kind of put it on like that. You just, you're now you're, you know, you're, you're out there. You're going to, you're going to do something. You're going to come back. You're going to win. Um, my friends, if you would like to get started with our 15 day online business builder challenge, business blueprints, come to an event, go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. And with that being said, get on out of here, my friends. Have a wonderful day. Stay legendary. Be legendary. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode of Wake Up Legendary. Get out of here. Peace.